Our Elon Moy reported that the current tax bill being discussed on Capitol Hill now features a 21 percent, 21, I said, corporate tax rate, also a top individual rate of 37 percent. It would raise the mortgage interest deduction threshold to 750,000. Earlier today, I sat down with Duquesne Family Office CEO Stanley Druckenmiller. Here are his thoughts on the tax bill. On your network the day after the election, I said I was very excited about the prospects for deregulation and tax reform, I thought there was a good chance they could boost the economy. I was particularly excited about the um, House program, A Better Way. And I thought it was the first program actually I had seen in decades which would address our fundamental problem in the United States, which we overconsume and we underinvest. And literally all they had to do was sign it. But Secretary Mnuchin had other ideas. And um, to me, it's just been a huge missed opportunity. Um, do you like, do you think the, the current tax reform plan is sound? No. Having said that, there are some things that, that are helpful in it that go a little bit of the way, a better way went. Um, first of all, there's expensing. That's obviously pro-investment like the better way, but again, very muted and carved out for some of their buddies. Um, there's uh, interest deductibility, because I think we got too much debt in this country and we don't have enough equity. And um, the final thing is you've really, really broadened the tax base. So a lot of individuals are getting tax cuts. Do That's, you get a tax cut under the plan? No, I'll get a 600 basis point increase. Does the estate tax repeal help you? That, that must help you. Is that going to be repealed? Or the raising the ceiling, I guess. Maybe that won't do too much. I'm, I'm hoping to end up pretty near zero. Um, <laughs> Your personal so, holdings? So, <laughs> so, so I don't really look at the estate tax. Uh, I don't like the repeal of the estate tax. I do. I do like this idea of 10 or 15 million, so somebody's nest egg, but, but repealing $300 million, uh, I don't get it. The other, the other thing I should have mentioned is um, moving the tax system to a ter territorial base, not as good as the border adjustment tax. But it, You but wanted the border adjustment tax? I was wildly in favor of the border adjustment tax, and to me it was, again, it was a very elegant solution to the problem we were over consumer and under investing. Unfortunately, Mr. Mnuchin and all their lobbying buddies from retail companies, which are probably not even going to be in business in 10 or 15 years, succeeded in killing the thing. It's pretty amazing that... Would it have hurt Amazon too, though, or no? I don't really care if it would have hurt Amazon. I, I don't think of things in those terms. Um, net, net. You know, I don't care. We, we, I think we need to tax. Uh, that was sort of a, 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 a value-added tax and drag, which is why it kind of got killed. But, but I really liked it, and uh, you know, it, it obviously got nixed very early on by by a just brutal retail lobby. So, do you think if the tax reform plan passes? And it, we don't know the final, final details yet, but um, what difference do you think it'll make to the stock market and the economy right now? I don't really think it's going to matter to the stock market. It's already in the stock market. And I think the stock market is basically a function of central bank policy. And any benefits to earning, I think, will be offset by central bank um, adjusting to that. I, I would say on the economy, it should have very, very stimulative effect in 18 and some for a few years after that. And longer term, if anything, it's a problem. Let me explain. Real quickly on 18, you think it'll be very stimulative, which is not what most people think. Is that because of the expensing or? It's not only the expensing. Um, ironically, um, the, the expensing is going to be more powerful even than it appears <laughs> if the tax cut for corporation is delayed a year, because then if your corporation, you have a huge incentive, you have a, you have a bigger rate. expensing under the higher tax rate in 18 than you would have under 19. So I think it supercharges um, capital spending and investment. 
my problem with this, this whole thing is, and again, the House plan was tax reform. It was not net-net um, fiscal stimulus. Here we are eight or nine years into an economic expansion. We're going to need ammunition desperately down the road. And we're increasing the deficit um, that depends on how you score it, a trillion to a trillion and a half, maybe more so. When Bush took over, I think debt to GDP was under 50 percent. Wow. By the end of Obama, the two of them did their damage together. It was 77. This thing takes it to 95. Mm -hmm. Kelly, if you remember, I spent two years of my life going around to colleges talking about entitlement reform and, and... Which may be next. I mean, they, they say they want to maybe do welfare reform next year. I see a picture up there. Maybe I could sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> I see it over there on that picture. Um, it would have been so elegant if they had used the fiscal stimulus in this on the corporate side and on the individual side and offset the trillion or trillion and a half stimulus with entitlement reform. We have 11,000 people a day turning 65 mm -hmm. for the next 20 years. This is a ticking time bomb that has to be dealt with. We're stealing from our future, and we just aggravated the problem. And to me, we could have used the stimulus and offset it with, with reform to Medicare and, and Social Security, and we whiffed. Last two questions then. Putting that aside, or maybe that being part of it, has do you support the president more now than you did back on the campaign trail or, you know, in the past? I never supported him on the com campaign trail. Um, no. Um, I think the tax plan, it is what it is. There are some good things and there are some bad things. I didn't get on all the bad things. I am so offended by the carried interest provision. The fact that they're keeping it in place so people well, who... Well, it's outrageous. Mm -hmm. We have doctors and lawyers in blue states, tax rates going up dramatically, professionals, and you have these multi-multi-billionaires um, with carve-outs. Now, let's be clear. Carried interest, you're making money on somebody else's capital. It's not on your own. If that's not income, I don't know what is. I want to repeat that. You're doing it on other people's capital. First of all, the billionaires lobbying the congressmen for this ought to be ashamed of themselves because we're asking doctors and lawyers and other Americans in blue state to take tax increases so we can fund this kind of nonsense. And as for its economic benefits, half the companies these guys buy, they then strip them and you know fire people so so the idea that they're increasing employment is absurd and the politicians listening to them who claim the holier than now now we're going to do all this reform and get rid of the loopholes it's an outrage hey there thanks for checking out cnbc on youtube be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories you can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from cnbc thanks for watching